Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you for joining me in another painting video. So this painting is painted from a photo that I took when I was dropping off my little one to the preschool. I walk outside and I see this white barn and the morning light shine on it and it's really, really beautiful autumn scene. So I decided to take a photo of it. It's a very typical everyday scene, but something about it i think it's the light i just really like it so i really want to capture how i feel that morning and really paint that there's actually a white van driving past so i really like that white van is actually at that kind of brightness light feel scenery so in the beginning same thing we're doing a drawing Drawing is a good way to kind of figure out your composition and also get the feel of your subject. And during that time, you're free to change things around. I actually moved the white van towards the left just a little bit more. It was really far away. So I moved it a little bit to the left. So this is a good time to figure out composition. I also add some figures just for scale and just feel a little bit more alive because there's no animal, nothing. And I don't want it to just be a painting of a white barn and a couple cars. So I added a figure is holding something long, maybe raking leaf, trimming grass, whatever it is, doesn't really matter. We just want a figure there doing something and another figure a little bit further away. So I actually paint this painting on a live stream the past Sunday, I end up didn't keeping it because there's some technical difficulties, but I did record the whole thing so I can replay it and share my thought with it. So here we start my first wash, taking my number 18 squirrel brush, load up with water and I mix my cobalt blue with cerulean blue just to get a little bit more warmth in the blue sky. Cerulean blue is a little bit warmer blue than cobalt, so I mix both into it. It's actually a little bit bigger paper. It's a 14 by 20. So I really need to mix a lot of water to get a good coverage for the first wash. So I make sure I have enough paint and moisture and water there. But I also want to keep that you know, nice vibrant blue. So I didn't use that much water. So actually you do see a little bit of bead, but there's not a lot, just enough for me to continue to wash down. So up to the horizon, I start to warm up the color quite a bit and I need to start to slow down a little bit and paint around some white areas such as the white van and the white barn. I did paint into the roof of the house though because that color is going to be a lot darker so I can just safely paint it in. But before the first wash is dry, I mix a more dry mixture and start to paint some tree already. It's a little bit risk, but if you mix your mixture dry enough, you will be able to get some really nice soft shape like these. So my mixture is actually quite dry and it's quite warm too. It's uh, autumn trees, right? So I added quite a bit of orange. And after I'm done with that initial shape of the tree, I continue to wash down with a little bit more water and you can start to see the bead going there. And I just add a little bit cooler color as for the grass, adding some more copal turquoise into my existing mixture and get that nice warm green. And I give a little bit of the yellow sort of warm off-white tone to the barn. I don't want it to be just completely white. I want that warm sunlight field. And then I mix sort of a neutral gray for the road. And just very quickly 
fill that wash finish that wash with the road and I'm actually painting adding some warmer tone to the road when I can because that part is where the sunlight is hitting the first wash is all about light and atmosphere so I'm really thinking about the color of the light I really want that warm morning light feel so I'm trying to give it warms wherever I can now the first wash is done, I just blow it dry so I can continue to work on it. So after the wash is dry, I'm going to start painting some more solid shapes. So I'm mixing a darker, warmer color and start from the top and paint some trees. Now I already have an initial shape, a very soft initial shape for the tree. So I just need to fill in a little bit of the darker part of the tree, some shadows, just to give the tree a little bit more solid form. But I still use a little bit of water to soften some of the edges. I don't want everything to be very harsh. So this part is a little bit tricky. I want it to look like trees, but I don't want it to be so literal and start to paint all of the leaf. One of the problems I've been having with the tree is I tend to paint, try to get a little bit too much textures. But I'm trying to really loosen up and just focusing on the big shape for this one. Keeping it simple and focusing on big shape allow me to work a little bit faster. So the wash will stay wet and I can continue to expand that wash and connect as much shape as I can. So I paint around the white truck, the white van, and I paint around the road sign, but I continue that wash. I add a little bit darker underneath just to give it a little bit more weight and volume. And while that tree is still wet, I add a little bit more volume, add a little bit more dark so that you have some nice soft transition from light to dark. I'm using the tip of my brush, try to get some tree branches and tree trunk in. They are very thin and delicate. So just use the tip of your brush and really kind of delicately scrape that out. Continue the wash. Keep that shape connected. One thing I kind of regret it I didn't do is just to connect that shape right into the roof. I was so caught up with painting the trees in the background, I forgot to did it. It's not a big deal, but it's something that I wish I did. So wet on to wet, adding more darker values into my wash, getting those volume, those trees, a lot of vegetations. So it's a one big shape, but because of the value changes and the silhouette, you start to see trees, a group of trees. So this painting is kind of important to me because I starting to have more grasp on when on to wet. Now you might find it weird because I've been doing that for a long time, but I usually don't do when on to wet when the wash is kind of moist. I usually do it when it's a little bit more wet. When your wash is a little bit, just a little bit moist and damp, you really need to mix a nice opaque heavy paint for it to stay and without back run and create some bad looking cauliflower edges. So I just feel like I start to get that consistency a little bit better. And that creates some very nice looking soft shape inside the wash. I'm inspired quite a bit by this great watercolor artist, Andy Evenson. I really inspired by his work lately. So that's why I'm starting to paint a little bit more like these. I really like his painting, the simplicity of his painting and how he paint the light, the color of the light and how he was able to keep his painting just around three layers, which is amazing. So I'm really trying to do that as well. So I'm trying to mix the right consistency 
and the right color and value. So the painting is taking shape. This is the point that I actually really enjoy what I'm doing right now because the first two wash, especially the beginning of second wash, I wasn't really sure how I'm going to tackle this. But at this point, I think I got a really good grasp on the direction the painting is heading. So I'm finishing the shape of the second wash, but I'm also starting to paint the car, the dark black windshield, and just giving a little bit more detail on the car. It's really far away, so I really don't need to paint a lot of details for that. A little bit of yellow for the headlight, actually the signal light, and I'm just painting the shadow right off the bat so it connects with the wheel. I really like that white van, I think it just adds so much to the light. It's funny because I didn't plan for it, it just drive by when I took the photo, so I was pretty lucky. So I added a little bit of off-white toned to the front of the truck just to separate a little bit to the side because the light is coming from the right. So even though the front is actually very bright too, but I just want to add a little bit of difference. I'm using the palette knife to scrape off, scratch off some paint to make the tree branch, tree trunk. And again, you need to make sure your paint is thick enough and it's almost dry for you to do that. Otherwise, you're not going to have anything to scratch off from. So while I was working on the car, the wash on the barn is dry. So I can add another layer on top. So I'm painting the cast shadow of the tree. There's trees from the other side because the sun is quite low during the fall and the winter season which is also why the sunlight is always so warm during the winter here because the sun angle is lower. So it's casting this long shadow from the other side. We got really tall trees, so it's casting a long shadow on the house. And I'm just adding a little bit of textures on the house. And I'm also painting the figure right now. I'm keeping the figure pretty simple. They're just there to serve at one purpose, which is just a scale reference. So I'm painting a very simple figure. Giving it that stick. And the back figure, even loser. He's holding some sort of bucket or something. And I'm painting in the shadow as well. They're casting a shadow to the left. Very nice, long, thin shadow. So the painting is taking place and it's looking good. So I'm just adding a little bit more color variations on the grass. There's some dry patch and things like that. So now I'm going to paint those huge shadow shape is casting across the road. Those are really going to add more depth, dimensionality, and going to make those light pops. So I make sure I mix a nice soupy mix. I need a lot of mixture because it's a lot of area to cover. And it's very important that I do it in one go so you don't keep remixing the color, go back and dab into the area. This needs to be really clean. So make sure you mix enough mixture when you do this and use a big enough brush for the work. Now the foreground shadow. Now when that is in, you can start to see the light just pops. And it also adds so much more depth as well. And you can see in the distance, I paint smaller stripe of shadow that conveys the distance because it is way into the distance and the perspective. So the shadow gap seems a little bit tighter. I'm adding a little bit of bird on the sky just to make the sky feels a little bit more spacious. Adding some final details for the row sign. 
and some dry grass under the barn. So I need this big shadow shape to dry. So I'm just blowing this dry because I want to paint that yellow stripe in. So I need it to be completely dry. Mix enough opaque yellow stripe and one single stroke. Here we go. I did pull that off. I was really happy about it. I'm mixing some darker color and I'm painting in the contact shadow of the curb where it connects to the ground, connects to the road. And some final detail touch up and we are finished. Thank you so much for joining me in this painting video. I hope you like the painting. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe. Click on the little bell icon because I am making a new tutorial on painting wet onto wet. So make sure you get notified when that new video is out. Thank you and I will see you guys again very soon.